Alright guys, welcome. Today, we're going to make this scene from The Last Samurai completely free in Blender and DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's get started and jump in. This one's going to be a little bit of a shorter tutorial, but I promise it will be no less informative. To start off with, I used a 3D model of Neo from the Matrix scene I did a couple of weeks ago, and I sculpted it into looking like it Captain Algren. It just involved me using the grab brush to displace the geometry a bit, but nothing too extreme. Then I added a cube and went into edit mode and traced the basic layout of the captain's robes. I then subdivided that and went into sculpt mode and used the grab and inflate brushes to make it look like it was actually made of cloth and not like he was just wearing some box. I joined the cloth with the captain's body and uploaded it to Mixamo. I'm pretty sure you know the rest by now. I dragged the markers into place, generated the rig and then I downloaded it. Of course, I wouldn't have made a rig if I wasn't going to animate, and I was never going to hand animate, that's too much work, so we're going to use Plask AI again to give the captain his animation. I tried to match the moves as closely as I could, but due to my lack of training by elite samurai warriors, I had to tweak it quite a bit. Luckily, my graph editor skills weren't that terrible, so I turned on proportional editing and selected some keyframes that were off and moved them up or down. Make sure to press G and then Y when moving keyframes, so your animation doesn't look like an impersonation of a chicken. Also, make sure to have only selected curve handles checked, so when you move a keyframe, it only moves in the axis that you want it to move in. One more tip, so you don't smash your display in due to the frustrations of animation. The folks over at Plask do a great job at animating the limbs of your character, but the actual placement of your character could be anywhere between your origin and Shanghai for all I care. So, to combat this problem, select the parent bone of your rig and add a copy transformation constraint to it. What transformation is it going to copy, you ask? Well, add in an empty to your scene and set the constraint to the empty. Now when you move the empty, you move the character. So all you have to do is animate the position of the empty. For the house in the back, it was a simple job of getting a cylinder and adding an array modifier to it. Then, once it had been duplicated into position, I moved some of the vertices with proportional editing to make it look as beaten up as the one in the reference. For the hills, I added some spheres into the scene and then used the grab brush to stretch them into hills. This scene is incredibly messy in terms of topology, but literally none of that matters because it will all be silhouetted. I added hair to Captain Algren by adding in an empty hair object and using the add brush to cover his head, I then just combed that into shape. To make the grass in the scene, I extruded out a cube and made the basic shape of a blade of grass. I then just used some geometry nodes to instance these blades over the hills. We don't exactly want this environment to look dead, so to make it seem like we put a lot of time into it, we can use some random value nodes and plug them into the rotation and the scale of the grass blades. If you really want to impress the whopping number of four people who see your render, you could plug a noise texture into the rotation of the grass blades and then animate it like I did. Now, that my friend looks professional. Anyway, anyway, back to the environment. As a CG artist, we want to spend as little time as possible tweaking and micromanaging things. So when you can get something for free, you take it. So, I took this HDRI from Polyhaven, then threw it into a color ramp, and bam, it went from boring sky to brilliant sunset. Texturing was an absolute godsend, as in this case, there was really only one material used in this scene, which was a black emission shader to get that silhouette look. However, for the grass, I mixed the emission shader with the transparent shader, so it looked like the grass was slightly translucent. I then just spent another 20,000 years tweaking my animation till it looked fairly decent. Once it was done, I began the burden of simulating. The cloth was fairly straightforward. If you want to know the settings I used, I'm going to shamelessly plug my Matrix video for the 23rd time in this video, as they're the same ones I used for Neo's coat. While simulating the cloth was a walk in the park, simulating the hair just straight up sucked, man. So, to spare you guys the pain of trying to simulate hair for hours and hours on end, with no guidance, I'll give you the secret ingredient for free. First, convert the empty hair to a particle system, and make sure the hair length settings are to your liking. Then, convert that particle system to a mesh, decimate the mesh so it's about 10,000 faces, and then add a cloth modifier to it, and then hit simulate. And make sure you've used a weight paint group for the stiffness value. If this isn't worth a sub, I honestly don't know what is. So help a fellow CG artist out and make things right. 
<coughs> Finally, we've got to do some compositing. Don't worry, for this render, compositing happens faster than you can say colour correction. Speaking of colour correction, I made it a bit more red, then added some film grain, and without further ado, I give you a final result. Thanks for watching guys, if you could like and subscribe that would be great, and if you have any suggestions for any other cinematic scenes I should make, please leave them down in the comments below. Now I'll let you get on with the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.